Hurt and Hill have without a doubt been a major part of the success of the Fiend character. Of course, it's an important thing we have to take notice of. It's in his entrance theme music. It's wrote on his gloves. It's referenced by Bray Wyatt himself on the Funhouse as fate. He leaves fate to decide what will happen to somebody. When he's attacking someone in the ring, he'll put the hurt glove to his ear so the hurt, fate, can decide what will happen. And I really do think that there is something more at play here. And all stems from one episode of The Fun House. But before we get to that, I need to ask you guys if you'd be so kind, hit that subscribe button. We literally just hit 14,000 subscribers last night, which is insane. And it definitely puts us on track for maybe hitting 15k around Christmas time. That would be insane. So thank you a lot for that. Of course, like the video, it does help it rank up on YouTube. Share it on social media so your friends can find it. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And of course, follow me over on Twitter at CWrestlingUK. You may have heard there's a lot of new YouTube rules out. I've actually privatised all of my old figure stuff. So it would be appreciated if you follow me over on Twitter. Because over there, I still talk about figures pretty much on a daily basis. So go and do that. Now, as I said, the Hurt and Hill gloves play a major part in the character. Therefore, they play a major part in the story. And we all kind of understand what the Hurt glove does. However, the Hill glove, we've only seen it used once. Just a couple of weeks ago on the Firefly Funhouse. Obviously, Rambling Rabbit's funeral. Bray Wyatt picked up the deceased body of Rambling Rabbit. And yowie wowie, Rambling Rabbit came back to life. But if you go back to WWE's YouTube channel and re-watch this episode, Bray Wyatt did not intend for this to happen. Bray Wyatt was shocked that Rambling Rabbit was okay. Therefore, that leads me to the conclusion that Bray Wyatt didn't know the power of the Hill Glove. Now that leaves us a major question as to where does the Hill Glove and the Hill Power come from? Not only that, but what does Hill the Fiend and Sister Abigail all have in common. Well, to understand that, you have to understand the relationship between Bray and Sister Abigail. And to do that, you've got to go all the way back to the very beginning when The Fiend was first referenced and the first time Bray Wyatt discovered The Fiend. Cool superstar ghost stories. The one that gave birth to the man in the woods theory that Bray Wyatt confirmed. This was The Fiend he was describing. And during this superstar ghost stories, Bray Wyatt told us about his childhood and that Sister Abigail took Bray Wyatt and the other children to the cabin in the woods. And I like to think that was kind of a cult because obviously we know Bray Wyatt is a cult leader. So it makes sense that that was a cult. Now, that would be kind of cool because obviously it references today's Bray Wyatt with previous Bray Wyatt with childhood Bray Wyatt, but what if the fiend killed Sister Abigail? We know Bray was there at her death. So think about it. Here's Sister Abigail doing a really good, humane thing, hopefully, not just some demonic cult leader. I think she was a good cult leader. She took in all the children, including baby boy Bray, and then Sister Abigail met an untimely end when the fiend made an appearance. So Sister Abigail, trapped in limbo, became a witch and then enchanted the fiend with the curse of Hill. The fiend wants to hurt people, but if he has the power of Hill as well, it's kind of a curse that no matter what he does, he can always heal them. And it starts the cycle over and over and over again. Now, I get that this theory is a little bit out there, but in my head, it makes a lot of sense. Even going back to the original Firefly Funhouse episodes, at the very start, Abby the Witch was like this horrible woman that Bray Wyatt would cower from every time she popped up at the window. It was like it was apparent and Bray Wyatt had to hide the horrible truth from the parent. 
But then as time went on, and the more that Bray let the fiend in, he didn't care. Even when Abby the Witch would warn him danger was coming, or tell him you've done it again. Bray Wyatt just laughed, because the fiend took over. The hurt took over. And then, of course, I like the fact that he can resurrect people, because what happens if he trapped the soul of Abby the Witch into Liv Morgan? To be fair, it could be Paige, it could be Ruby Riot, it could be Rosemary, it could be whoever you want it to be. And then you have this, not a team, but two characters with similar powers, but both doing opposite things. You have the fiend causing chaos and going around hurting everyone he can. And then you have Abby the Witch, Sister Abigail, putting things right. Almost clearing up all the messes that the fiend could create. I mean, you can't just constantly have the fiend take people out of action. By this time in six months, there'd be no one left on the WWE roster. They'd all either be in NXT or on the injury shelf. So it makes sense that something like this could happen. Let me know, as you always do, your thoughts in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll, as always, see you next time. Peace!